Well, it's time for our, a check-in with our good friend Louis Gomert, congressman from the great state of Texas. And boy, do we have a lot to talk to Louis Gomert about. Louis, how are you? Well, as far as I know, fine. How are you, Brian? Well, I, you know, let's see how the day progresses. Now, you've got to bring us up to date, because yesterday we heard that the Senate leaders were working on something, and then all of a sudden John Boehner decided he was going to put something forward, and uh, he was working on it, working on it, working on it, working on it, and then about 10 o'clock last night I saw something that said that they pulled it and sent everybody home and they're not going to bring that matter forward because they lost conservative support. So where are we exactly right now, at least in the House of Representatives? Well, you just pretty well uh, covered it. We had a, a, a conference yesterday morning with uh, Republicans, and, uh, you know, normally you would hope that uh, when you have a conference that, you know, what the conference had to say would be taken into consideration. But instead, we yeah, we had a two-hour meeting, but it was after we were told, look, here's what's going to be in the bill, and basically we're caving. Look, we had caved two weeks ago. We had said uh, the night of the shutdown, okay, all right, we've given you a number of compromises with ourselves. You've said nothing but no, 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 no. Uh, here's one. You don't even have to agree to any of the things we've compromised with ourselves. Just appoint conferees, negotiators, and we'll have this worked out by morning. And Harry Reid wouldn't even appoint negotiators. That's what the Constitution, law, and rules require. Wouldn't even do that. So we've been bidding against ourselves for two weeks, and the president has had meetings at the White House. Finally, when he dropped a 37% right. favorability, he has a meeting and says, uh, uh, I just wanted to call you over to remind you, I'm not negotiating well, on anything, okay, but, but the media gives him cover. And so we get down to yesterday morning. We're told, right. okay, we're going to extend the debt ceiling to February 7th, CR to January 15th. Uh, we're going to add income verification to Obamacare, which is already in there, but the president said we're going to ignore it. So we're going to say we really, really mean it this time. And then we're going to add a uh, two-year suspension of the medical device tax, which most of the Senate, I think 79%, 79 out of 100 wanted it suspended anyway. And then um, we were going to uh, require members and senators and president, vice president, cabinet to have Obamacare. Well, we were already under it except for the leaders and uh, right. some of the staff. But uh, anyway, uh, apparently they didn't have enough people to vote yes, so right. they said, okay, we'll drop the two-year medical device tax suspension and the income verification, big whoopee. And uh, then apparently that still didn't have enough votes. And now we're told, uh, gee, uh, we're just going to wait and see what the senate does all right well, so let, let me ask you about that because and just one follow-up question here yeah the senate proposal which i guess will be voted on when the senate comes in at noon today yeah they would, wouldn't want to get up early no they, they're the senate <laughs> they, they kicked the can on funding to january 15th the debt ceiling to february 7th as you understand the senate bill today can you imagine that republicans in the house will support that measure uh not many no. Well, well, then we're we're still nowhere. Well, no. If the if the speaker brings a bill to the floor and all of the Democrats and uh, twenty or thirty uh, Republicans jump on board, then yeah, it passes. Well, wouldn't but, that be uh, the end of his speakership, in effect? Uh, see, I've given up on on projecting that. Uh, at November a year ago, uh, I stood up at conference where we nominate and and, and vote. Yeah, you nominated conference. Newt. You nominated Newt to be the speaker. Yes, I did, Gilmer, and isn't and it true I that didn't no get a second? Yeah. And so then, uh, you know, and going in, there was a possibility we had we'd have a secret ballot and a vote. And then uh, we had 21 people going into the vote in January that said, under no circumstances, they'd even signed their names, said, "I will not vote for John Boehner." 21. And uh, that morning it became 13, so I, I'm, I can't predict. <laughs> All right. So. We got we got Speaker Boehner for a few years to come then. All right, uh, Congressman Gomert, thanks for joining us this morning. I want to ask you, uh, yesterday, uh, the president, uh, one of the high honors of the commander-in-chief is right. to uh, deliver the Medal of Honor to yeah. our greatest American heroes. And uh, yesterday, William Swenson, uh, he, he was the recipient of, of this mm -hmm. honor. And during the... 
ceremony. It sounded to me, and it sounded like uh, to many people, that the president used this moment and used the heroism of William Swenson, a former Army captain who received the nation's highest military honor yesterday. He used this moment to take a swipe at this petty partisan political squabble that's going on in Washington. I want you to listen to this moment and then comment. Oh, I, I heard it. Now, well, you're an example to everyone in this city uh, and to our whole country of the professionalism and patriotism that we should strive for. Representative Gomer, what do you think? Uh, I, I think that uh, that was coming from a source that knows all about petty, partisan, Chicago, thuggery politics, because uh, you, you had a guy who, yes, he put uh, a well-deserved Medal of Honor around a, a tremendous hero, but then we had tremendous World War II heroes, veterans, uh, thousands and thousands of World War II, Vietnam, Korean, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan veterans that he's thumbed his nose at for political purposes, spent more money to put up barricades around uh, memorials that were open air that didn't cost really anything to keep open, and uh, spent a lot more money to close them just to say, screw you veterans, we're not going to let you in because I am playing petty partisan politics. Look, it's time we wake up and smell the cattle flatulence that you're paying to research. We are wasting so much money, and the children that Nancy Pelosi gathered around her the day she was sworn in as speaker, uh, they're still not of legal consent age. We are still stealing their money their without money. their legal consent. Sixteen trillion dollars a year. That, yeah, it's time that we quit stealing from future generations right. simply because we can, even though we legalize the stealing, and say, look, we're not going to spend future generations' money. We're going to be responsible, All right. and uh, we're not doing it so far this week. Representative Louis Gomer, we only have a minute here. You know how tight our clock is here in the morning. Sure. Uh, you've been here. Uh, let me just ask you really quickly. A lot of people are second-guessing the strategy of the Republicans. A lot of people are saying, you know what? You should have just let Obamacare go through. Let it be the disaster that it is, and then you can say, I I told you so, and now let's let's fix it. Uh, what do you think of those those people who say that? Well, they are not being realistic uh, because if there had not been a filibuster, if there had not been a stand that we would finally, after several times of trying to compromise, quit compromising against ourselves, then the talk would not have been about how disastrous Obamacare was. Oh, no, the mainstream would have moved on. This caused America to stand up and say, whoa, wait a minute, this is really bad, and concentrate on what Washington was, was actually doing. Otherwise, we'd already been told that we were going to have an amnesty bill brought to the floor or whatever they want to call it, and the the emphasis would have gone off Obamacare and people would have been suffering quietly without the mainstream media even touching it. They would have been able to turn their heads right. and cough the other way. Right. Right. And on that note... <laughs> we'll thanks for it. that imagery at yeah, 7.15 in the morning. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> Congressman Louis Gohmert, from, uh, a Republican from the state of Texas, thank you so much for joining us. Always, Always love talking to you. Thank you All so right. much.